What's going on, everyone? Welcome to Rule of Two. Uh, we don't have the original music that we normally have for the podcast. I'm here with Mark, and he's uh, in an undisclosed location somewhere, <laughs> <laughs> hiding somewhere in the yeah. outer rim. <laughs> oh, man. This is, uh, this is, look, it's a tough time, but we wanted to do the show because we wanted to hang out with you guys and chat. Um, oh. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, man. We just wanted to hang out and see, you know, um, what, what, what you guys are doing, how you guys are coping and just talk. Let's just talk Star Wars and try to take our mind off this crap Yeah, man. for like an hour or something, man. How are you doing, bro? How I'm, are you holding up? I'm good, man. You know, I'm over here in Canada and over here, it's, I mean, it, we have to talk about this a little bit. So this stream is going to be, you know, Mark's not at the studio. I'm chilling at home and, yeah, uh, I mean, look, at, look at <laughs> You're like in some yeah. random bedroom somewhere. So it's not that random a bedroom, okay? So um, this uh, this was actually I'm actually in Florida. If everybody must know, I'm somewhere in Florida. That's as that's in the as outer far rim. As I go. Yeah, in the <laughs> outer rim. <laughs> uh, are we gonna show them Back to the Future or no? Um, maybe towards the end. Maybe, maybe towards, towards the, the end. end. Okay, if you guys are still here towards the end, we got about 1,100 people here right now. It's pretty cool. Hey yeah. everyone, how's it going? Hit that What's like up, button. Everybody? Um, so to start things off, we got a tip from someone. You, you might you probably heard this in articles and stuff. Regarding Mandalorian season two, um, the actor who plays Moff Gideon has revealed that there's going to be a massive lightsaber fighting scene. Many of them, apparently, and he's even gone as far as to say that in the training that he's done for the the show for the episodes, he's broken numerous black uh, dark sabers. So. I'm pretty excited. I'm wondering who he's going to be fighting. You know, Mark, who do you think? Yeah, I am. Um, you know, look, we, we, we heard this, uh, this, you know, it, it's more like a sourced rumor. Um, so, it, so, you know, we think it's pretty, it's a pretty solid, uh, uh, you know, bit of news, but um, Giancarlo Esposito has been going through all these dark sabers, meaning that there's a lot of fighting going on and sabers, um, usually uh you know we know that they can fight other sabers we know that they can fight you know a, a stun but you know like like the batons and vibro swords and stuff like that i'm i'm hopeful that we get um you know light dark saber on real saber i mean that would be epic and i don't put that um outside the realm of what favreau and dave filoni um have done i mean no. they shocked yeah. us with baby yoda right like yoda um, the species that nobody knows the name of was off limits uh, throughout the entire tenure of George Lucas owning the brand. Um, and now all of a sudden we have an entire show based around it. So the fact that we could get another force wielder with a lightsaber in the show to join the sort of the good guys, I think is within the realm of possibility, man. And like, I'm I'm excited about it, and I'm not gonna give up hope on that until the show comes out. Some people in chat are saying he's gonna be fighting Ahsoka. I think he's gonna be fighting Luke, maybe. Um, obviously, he's gonna be fighting someone else who has some sort of a saber weapon. Um, as far as where the episode goes, I've said it a million times. I think it's gonna go in the realms of trying to find the Jedi and trying to reunite Baby Yoda with the Yoda species. And I think Luke is going to lead him there. So I could see the end of the actual season being the same ending as um, episode seven. So where they just find Luke and he's like. Do you really think Luke is going to show up in in the Mando? Apparently. Mando. Uh, Mando. Mando. Where's Mando. the fob? Mando. Yeah. Well, apparently Mando, give me the fob. <laughs> this, this source has also said that uh, there's going to be a lot of... Um, de-aging so there's gonna be a lot of actors really? that are coming back yeah a lot of actors that are coming back from the og and they're gonna be de-aging them do you um somebody asked and it's actually, actually a really good question because i'm wondering this myself yeah um do you know when the new season is supposed to come back on forget all this corona uh, tragedy october that America's... october yeah october yeah yeah so yeah, a month... that would be good <coughs> Corona, a month earlier than <laughs> Dude, <laughs> a month earlier please, than please. last year. Everybody, knock on wood, man. Everybody in the chat, knock yeah, on wood. Yeah, knock on wood, man. Yeah, yeah. Listen, the thing is, know, is, like, please. like I think most of us who are young, um, 
I think we'll be okay. You know, it doesn't mean we should just go out there and get it. But I, I, the the issue is if we transfer it to our our loved ones, like our our parents or you know grandparents and stuff, they will have a harder time dealing with this. Yeah, man. I um look, I I'm not super panicky. I'm not super scared, but I am being very precautious. Um, everybody at Collider is working from home. Um, everybody's uh, doing things remote. You know, we're not. Um, um, we're not uh, forcing anybody to come into the office right now. We're trying to do the best that we can to keep everything uh, flowing from everybody's home yeah. and trying to point in the same direction. And it's it's tough, you know. And I've today I bought like you know all this groceries. You know, um, I uh, got gas for all my cars and gas for my boat. You know, fix my sail on the you know on the thing. You know, Mark awesome. chilling out in in the outer rim. Yeah, I got gas for like my twelve cars. <laughs> got gas for my yacht. I'm just gonna see you guys later, man. Got my spaceship out there. Oh man, I want a spaceship, dude. I That'd want a cool. spaceship. Let's Let just go to the moon. You, you know what? This this is totally non sequitur, totally random. What is your favorite? Like, if you could have any. Star Wars spaceship and forget like it's not fair to say oh I want a Star Destroyer because then I get 30 ties you know what I mean yeah, yeah. I'm talking about a single person starship and I want the chat involved too what is your favorite star if you can get any of the starships and anything you've ever seen about Star Wars which one would you want that's tough um, the tie advance is pretty cool I really like Kylo's new ship but I'd probably have to say um, maybe a Jedi Starfighter. Cause damn, you stole mine, dude! You yeah. son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I remember having that model when I was a kid. I think it was made out of lead or something. I don't know. <laughs> it's like poisonous, and uh, it was just. I just remember like just just flying that thing around. You know, make believe when you're a little kid. Dude, they're so cool. Um, they are. They, they just look cool. What color would you take yours in? All black. I'd black it out. A total blackout, huh? I like yeah. the yellow. Like, Anakin's yellow Starfighter is pretty it's, damn cool. It's cool. Yeah, it's cool. But, I mean, I would just black that. You know you know, in Vader Episode 1, what Vader did to his? That was, I was just like, yeah, let's black it out completely and put some red tint on the yeah. on the, on yeah, the yeah, windows. Yeah, yeah. yeah, let's just do that. Speaking I, of Vader Episode, if this Corona thing keeps going, I'd probably, I'm probably going to um, postpone filming because it's just not yeah. safe to fly people out and film and all that stuff first of all that would be tragic and 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 i know i speak for a lot of folks um that hopefully that doesn't come to that yeah um but what um when when were you planning on on actually starting to film uh july actually yeah july, july. Huh? well so i mean we could be okay but you never know there's still that risk um and then you know we i'd have to fly padme out you know the actress who played padme cat lasalle and um, it's it maybe a few other people and, uh, it just would be risky. So I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, I'm praying for you on that. And I know that, you know, I know, uh, like I think more than most, how much that means to you because how much we talk about it offline and, yeah. and, you know, how invested you are in that and, and all those things. So look, hopefully, you know, this, this whole Corona crap, um, blows over come summertime you know and like we can get back to business you know back to the business of yeah of, of entertaining um the fans, fans right? and people yeah yeah it, it, it sucks i even see with my views like people just don't give a crap about star wars right now like they just just all the videos are tanking it's just like oh what are we going to do oh no everything's over <laughs> Don't try it. I Don't told you it would come it. to this. The corona is taking over. <laughs> the corona is taking over. <laughs> yeah, it really is taking over, man. And what it's just like, you know, uh, before we started the show, we were talking about like how do we want to cope with this crap, you know? Like yeah. like what are some things that people can do? What are some ways that we can engage with the community? Like one like sort of blue sky dream that I was having is it possible that theory and I can have uh, a Star Wars RPG session um, with the fans. You know, is there some yeah. kind of interface that we can use, whether it's a live chat or some kind of like? Well, I, I mean, this, kind of I, I love how we have this here with the live chat going, and then also, you know, we could play games too. We could do Battlefront too, because I mean, I see people are 
getting fired. People are getting laid at my buddy's company. They just fired a whole bunch of people. And it's, it's just, this has happened all over the world, you know? And, yeah. um, so I, I know it's, it's tough for a lot of people and I know things are just not good right now. And I know they will be eventually, but this is seriously, I think the biggest crisis that the world has faced in, I don't know, however many years it's been Look, a, a while. I, I was in New York City uh, during 9-11, and um, I was in Manhattan. Um, you know, I saw the second plane go in myself, and I went through the, you know, the wow. tragic month that happened afterwards and, and the whole anthrax scare and everything that was going on with that. But it was pretty contained to just us in Manhattan, yeah. you know? Um, and the world was watching us, and the world felt the tension, but it was really only us experiencing it, you know? Um, and with this thing, it's a global experience. Yeah. Um, so this thing is like, I think 20 to 30 times more intense than nine 11 was in terms of, of how people need to deal with it. Um, you know, it's every supermarket in America doesn't have groceries. Every pharmacy in America doesn't have hand sanitizer and, and, and vitamins and like uh, aspirin and those kinds of things. I mean, this, this is yeah. this is serious, serious stuff, you know? So it's like all we can really do is focus on our immediate unit of people, make sure that we convince the people around us that we love to stay indoors, try to li limit contact as much as possible, um, Hope, hope to God that the government of our world understand the responsibility that they have to take care of us as a people and the relief starts coming you know after this whole thing blows over tax breaks uh you know yeah. god knows what i'm not a pol like like i know nothing about politics but like there's gonna be this is this is some serious stuff man and it's like well i also wonder even like like that's its own but it's like i also wonder how it's gonna impact our entertainment too like i mean all the movies are getting pushed back you know start like what's gonna happen with star wars like is the cassian ender show like are they stopping filming or the ob1 show you know like all of this stuff mandalorian like they got to do the the post production on that like are they just gonna send those people home and halt everything or like what's look the, the cassian andor show man like I, first of all, I've never believed that that show was ever going to get made. Mm -hmm. So I think that that has a tough time um, getting made no matter what happens. Even what do you think without... it's going to be about? I have no idea, man. Like, I mean, it's Empire. You know, It's time of the Empire, so it could get yeah, later. For me, I've always struggled um, with, with it um, because I didn't love the Cassian Andor character too much in Rogue One. I, loved, I thought Rogue One was great. But, you know, for me, Rogue One was all about Krennic. I thought Krennic was amazing. Yeah. Um, I, you Dude, know, I loved I, Krennic. Yeah, Krennic was my favorite character in that. I thought Tarkin was amazing. Yeah. I thought Vader was amazing. I thought, you know, Urso was really strong, too, as a character. I really liked her. Um, but, you know, to me, Cassian Andor, I don't know. It, it just didn't seem like a lot of stuff there to build an entire series around. So I've never had high hopes that that series was ever going to get made but now for the for the series that we all want right like we all want mandalorian we can't wait for that but oh, dude yeah mandalorian's gonna be the sickest show ever but what's up with kenobi that's the thing is i don't i don't know is it gonna be delayed now you know what's the, i heard that they stopped what they they they're redoing the whole script what's the deal with that yeah, so look, the rumors that I've heard is that there's been some creative shifts at Lucas um, uh, Films and that some of the new folks that are having more and more creative oversight uh, took a look at what was going on with Kenobi and didn't like where it was headed, didn't like the direction of it, and pulled the plug on it so that they could reset the creative. That's what yeah. I've heard. I mean, we haven't uh, reported that publicly at Collider because we don't have enough sources to validate that exactly and i'm not going to give the names of the specific people that are involved yeah. making these decisions even though i have heard who they are yeah um but the idea you know what i heard is that kenobi wasn't really the focus of the series yeah that the series was called kenobi but that it was actually about these other two characters that were looking for him that would have tanked really hard you know it's people like, would have been so pissed you know, it, 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 you know, it's like, 
I get it that Leia was also looking for him and that, you know, that, that, that there's a narrative that you can build around that. Yeah. Um, but Kenobi needs to, needs to be Kenobi in almost every single frame, in my opinion. Yeah, dude, it's about, the show is about him. It needs to be about him. It's like saying we have a, the, the Mandalorian is not about the Mandalorian. It's about, I don't know, stormtroopers. Right, right, right. So Kenobi needs to be about Kenobi from start to finish. Um, I I really enjoyed um, uh, Jamie Costa's Kenobi fan film. Me too. And, it was great. And, yeah. And I liked his kind of somber tone of like Kenobi, like dealing with his, with his loneliness. And look, what a better theme for us right now who are being forced into the right. social separation or the social isolation. I mean, th- this is a very... Like what Star Wars, man? Star Wars is our is our way to interpret the world, right? It's like yeah, and it's, it's our world. escape. So I just I hope they're going to continue making more stuff. I mean, as for the Kenobi show, I hope they would show Kenobi from the get go. You know, um, for them to make that, I, I'm I, if that script is true and they changed it, then you know, good for them. Whoever stepped in, that would have been terrible. Could you imagine? I feel like something they do, and this is something we saw in the Force Awakens, which. It, it works, but I mean, it didn't work for the rest of the trilogy for me is that uh, they seem to kind of like dangle these important characters on a stick ahead of you. And it's like, oh, it's coming. It's coming. Don't worry. It's coming. You're just going to have to wait for it. So it's like if they would have Kenobi at the last <laughs> episode, just be like, what the, like, what the hell? I'm watching a show about Kenobi. And it's like, why is he in the last episode? I'm just yeah, like yeah. building up to this moment. And then it just ends It's like, oh, season two. It's like, don't give me that. You know, just yeah, show yeah. me what he's going through. Show me everything that's happened since Revenge of the Sith. You know, all of his nightmares. I, dude, I want to see Kenobi like PTSD. I want to see him like sweating when he sleeps, like just, un- just hearing Anakin and and talking to Qui Gon. And I just want to see all of that. Yeah, man. Like, like you know, show the isolation. You know, show the uh, the struggle <laughs> of what it means to have made the choice the choices that he made and his reflection on those choices. Yeah. Um, but then also I think, and look, I think you and I have talked about this a million times. Um, Revenge of the Sith ends in a cliffhanger. Yeah. Um, and it ends in a cliffhanger between Yoda and Obi-Wan. Yeah. And, you know, before Obi-Wan leaves Yoda, he says, he's like, wait, I have more training for you. I still have, you know, like, yeah. Teach you how to commune with your old master. And he's like, Qui-Gon. Yeah. Qui-Gon. Yeah, you know, and so we know that Did, that needs to be a part but, of but, the Kenobi series. But they kind of messed it up in canon because apparently Qui-Gon never showed his true form because he couldn't. And he didn't show it until the book, like right before A New Hope in the book uh, from a certain point of view where he like materializes himself. And it took him forever to learn this supposedly. So he'll just have to be a voice if they want to stick to that to the novel. Right. And like, look, um, Star Wars has been playing fast and loose with all this canon stuff anyway, you know, and it's like there's always a way to spin it. Yeah. But I I do think I do think that Qui-Gon needs to be a part of the Kenobi series. And I'm sure that Liam Neeson would happily come back to play that role. I don't know if it's going to happen. Yeah. Even as a voice. I don't know if it's going to happen, but I think that they should definitely uh, try it. You know what I just I don't understand is. They have unlimited money, um, unlimited power. They have all the best writers they could get. They they are Star Wars, right? So what I want to see is like the things that they know we want, and it's like I just feel like they're they're like trickling it to us. Like they're just I don't know what like this High Republic stuff. It doesn't look like it's too interesting, and I might be just you know talking too ahead of my time here because we haven't seen it. But it's just like, all right, man. Like you know we want to see Old Republic. Bring that around. Like, who are these Vikings? Like, I don't want to see mm. Vikings. I want to see old Republic stuff. But maybe it's leading to that. Maybe I'm just jumping the gun. So yeah, yeah. So apology. There's like some boat outside driving through. That's got some. Jeez. Anyway, Mark's like, yeah, it's just that's just my yacht. Just, uh, don't worry about it, guys. It's no problem. <laughs> oh god, yeah. This is actually a boat. I'm in a boat. Um, but no, I'm not. Um, but yeah, um, the whole Viking thing, man. Like. I don't get the Viking thing. Me neither. The space Vikings. You know what they should do? Just, okay, hire Hayden, hire, hire Ewan, and then do this the de-aging technology on them, and then put them in the Clone Wars, but live action. Yeah. I mean, it's super simple. Why not? I mean, look, 
Hayden Christensen returning to Star Wars, I think, is something that should absolutely be done in some fashion. I don't know, you know? what why they're not capitalizing on that. I mean, just make a whole show on Vader after Return of the Jedi. Or, I mean, Revenge of the Sith. Return of the Jedi, he's dead. Revenge of the Sith. Or bring Hayden back, you know, and just de-age him a little bit and, and make it between episode two and three. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, I'm with you, man. Like, to me, and look, something else that we know about the Kenobi series, um, you're a little out of focus. I don't know if um, this is a heads up. Oh, they can't see me anyways unless I, I click my oh, face. Oh, okay. It's all good. You know, one one thing that, like, uh, bums me out um, about the Obi-Wan series is that it's only supposed to be, I believe, between four and six episodes. So it's actually a very small run. But, like... To me, it's like make it a 10 episode run, make it an eight episode run at least and really show like what's the best part about Obi-Wan that we that we that was the biggest reveal of Revenge of the Sith, the, uh, of Attack of the Clones, of the Phantom Menace is that he was a good friend, you yeah. know, and a cunning warrior like yeah. Obi-Wan's friendship with 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 Vader, their their relationship with each other is almost like the heart and soul of star wars to to like i mean yeah for sure luke's redeeming of the father is kind of another huge part of it but luke uh, right. i'm sorry uh, obi-wan and vader like their relationship with each other i think could be explored further yeah and like you know you have the line um you know uh you know you know like i was but the master you know oh, i'm sorry you you know you were the master and i was but the learner yeah um in New Hope, that is so open ended. Now I am the master. Right. That's so open ended that you can have an entire arc where Qui Gon is telling Obi Wan, Before I died, I asked you to take care of the boy. Yeah. And now in death, I still ask you to take care of the boy. He is the chosen one. Yeah. You know? You must um, see it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And it's like, God, there's so much fun stuff they could explore there, man. And there's so much, dude. Dude, I'm telling you, this script that I'm writing up, for the, the me, Danny, and Nikolai writing up for episode two, I swear to God, if Disney would take that and they would just be like, okay, you know what, make it, and then we'll put it on Disney+, Plus, they will make millions upon millions upon millions. It, the script is, it's not just two people fighting, and that's something that I was always worried about. It, it's This is going to be legit, legit story stuff. And that's something that I think is the heart and soul of Star Wars and something that they need to really capitalize on because there's so much story in so many different angles and so many different characters that they can... It's cool. It's not just centric on, like, Obi-Wan and Anakin, which some people love. It's not just centric on Leia and Han, which some people love, or Rey and, and whatever. It, it's it's There's just so many characters that they can go on, like Cassie and Andor, of all people. They want to make a show on Cassie and Andor. Right, right. Like, it, you know, and, like, for me... I, I always thought that um, post the prequels um, that Lucasfilm had an amazing job uh, with the uh, expanded universe um, about exploring the legends of the Sith, yeah. you know, going deeper into the Sith, uh, the Darth Bane series that everybody's so, such a big fan of. I've only read uh, the first book, but, you know, maybe now that I'm quarantined or not, I'm not quarantined, but that we're, we should all quarantine, <laughs> self-quarantine, okay? To be clear, we should all isolate ourselves into this crap load. <laughs> I got over. a cough going on. I don't know what's happening here. Maybe it's on set. <laughs> this the is, corona is taking, taking over. over. I know. This is it, guys. Let's see you later. You know, God forbid, brother. God forbid. Um, but, yeah, you know, it's like the Darth Bane series I thought was an amazing series of how keeping all the pillars of Star Wars allowed you to go off on a, like on a new story about a Sith um, who – discovers that he's a Sith really by having the realization that his dark side power without any training was the direct result of the death of his father. Mm -hmm. Kind of a spoiler warning, but it's in the beginning of the book, so it's not that big a spoiler warning. It's okay, the book's but, like 80 years old. Yeah, you know, but this is what Darth Bane, like this is what set Darth Bane on his journey. Mm -hmm. And it's a completely different journey than we've ever seen, but it, it's whole to the pillars, you know? Yeah. So it's like, like, have fun with that stuff, but don't give me, you know, I'm fine with this whole expanded novelization, whatever project. The Vikings, yeah. Project Viking, what's it called? Uh, Project Lightning? High Republic. 
uh, yeah. The oh, Project Republic, Luminous. Yeah, this Project Luminous stuff where it's like, oh, the Jedi are here, and then there's no Sith, there's Vikings. You know what? I th the, the Vikings are called, what are they called, the Nile or something like that? I think that's going to lead to Darth Nihilus. I, I just, maybe. I don't, but, but also Darth Nihilus was, he wasn't High Wait, Republic. But, that's yeah, but Darth Nihilus, you don't have He's Nihilus old. without Revan. Yeah. You know, so it's like you need to now go back to that world. Well, Revan's you know? canon now, apparently. So. Revan is what? Canon now, apparently. Yeah, Revan is canon because he's in the Clone Wars. Well, did you not see that Hasbro... I told you, Hasbro's making that lightsaber. Revan's lightsaber. No, no, no. Yeah. So they're, oh, they're making a Revan they're make, lightsaber. Yeah, Revan's lightsaber was purple and and red, and you can change, you can take the blade out and. Um, yeah, look, uh, Moises Montgomery, cool. who I believe is one of your uh, admins, just made a great point, and and like I can't believe I haven't even thought about. This. Oh, zip! Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, zip. yeah, yeah. He just made a great point. It's like Star Wars and this whole isolation thing should give us a little bit of strength right now in these tough times. Yeah, you know. So many of our characters that we love have had to go through this isolation period for the greater good. So we're all just Jedi, basically. We're all just Jedi, man. Yeah. And, and like, you know, we got to we got to isolate ourselves and we'll come out stronger on the other side. Um, you know, we, we have to, man, like it's tough out there right now, you know, and it's it's almost tough to talk Star Wars. But you and I talk to each other and we're like, we need to do this. You know, we, we got to we got to. You know, it's like it's like a zombie movie. We're still broadcasting, you know? <laughs> if anyone's out there listening. <laughs> yeah, if uh, anybody's out there listening, man, drop us a, drop us a one or something. Drop us man. a one, man. Spam one right now. Yeah, yeah. So we got some super yeah, chats. Yeah, Michael Parker, thanks. Prime Universe, thanks. Zachary Rosenberg, thanks, bro. Arc XO CT1011 says Baby Yoda is adorable. He is. I do he you is. think do you think Palpatine was really trying to transfer his essence into Baby Yoda? No, no. You, no. Did you hear that? Well, that's my oh. theory. That's what I think he was trying that's to do. That's your theory? Yeah. Well, what was he doing with the clones then? Why? Why? Why was? Why? Why was the scientist having that clone patch on him from Camino? Okay. Okay. So first of all, I I hear what you're saying. If you were to assume that these people are actually talking to each other, but they're not talking to each other, dude. Like. Mm. John Favreau and Dave Filoni and the stuff that they're working on, like maybe they texted one or two things to JJ and the folks working on the movies, but these two worlds were not interacting with each other. Now the Dave Filoni world, but they keep they keep saying keep alluding the rumors that like it's it's season two is going to explain how Palpatine survived and all this stuff. Really? Yeah. It just makes I mean, sense to me. Look, he's a clone, and then Baby Yoda has the the scientist. Dr. Pershing, who has the clone patch on him from Camino, and Palpatine's all about transferring his essence, and he's all about making clones that can handle his body, right? Like, his clone sucked. <laughs> his son's, his son's, his clone, which was his son, sucked. And it's like, he's looking for, like, this perfect vessel. Then he finds Rey, and she's like, he's she's the perfect. What also confuses me is, wasn't he trying to take over Kylo? And then all of a sudden, he, he switches his plans, and he's like, okay, you know what, Rey's better. It's like, I, that's why it's like look man it's like you know that i respect your theories and we riff on them all the time it's hard for me to take the rise of skywalker as canon dude and yeah. i know it is i mean i yeah. know it absolutely is yeah yeah it is now but but it's so tough for me to include that in my sort of wax poetica around star wars like like you know, the mando you know the mando season finale brought tears to my eyes it was so friggin' good. Yeah. You know? Um, and the way that they tied into the Clone Wars, and even the way that the Clone Wars is playing itself out this season, like, that to me is the Star Wars, like, we're learning new shit about Star Wars. Yeah. Like, that's that scene between uh, Anakin and Padme in season, in the second episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That pushed Star Wars forward. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, to me, Rise of Skywalker is, like, this weird, like, that's like the expanded universe. It's like well, it literally is. You, they took the Dark Empire story and they just used that, right? But you right. know, you know what really bugs me is in the Last Jedi, Snoke is like, "I bridged your minds," and then and then we find out in <laughs> in the comics, in the new comic that just came out, and in the Rise of Skywalker, that their minds were bridged all along, way before Snoke was even around. 
right because of their forced dyad so it's like i really don't think that there was any well, communication bridge, right 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 at all between right. directors and writers i really don't and it's it's sad for such a production as big as star wars i think it's really unfortunate that this would happen I mean, they can try to say, oh, you know, we, we had a plan all along and this and that. But it just in the writing, it just doesn't make sense. Like, why would you lead us one way and then lead us completely to say that this doesn't this never has this, no, this is not even the case. You know, they they have a forced diet and they were connected from the very beginning. So it's like, which one is it? Did Snoke do it or did like why weren't they able to do like I'm just confused. And that confusion that you feel is the frustration that I feel with this new Star Wars. And like, look, I had the pleasure, and it was a pleasure, and, and I'm just gonna say it, and I know that you know about this, mm -hmm. but I interviewed uh, Ryan Johnson for about two hours um, about a month ago Yeah. Uh, for, a, for a piece that I'm doing um, on him. I interviewed uh, his cinematographer, mm -hmm. um, 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 Yedlin, Stephen Yedlin, uh, who's a very, very talented guy. Um, and I also interviewed his producer, Ron Bergman. Now, all three of these folks worked on The Last Jedi. Mm -hmm. um, and I asked them all questions about The Last Jedi. And I'm comfortable saying this because I don't think this violates any part of my interview or anything like that. But the story is that uh, Ryan Johnson uh, had a general meeting with Lucasfilm where he came in to pitch an original story idea that he had for a expanded universe uh, piece mm -hmm. had nothing to do with the trilogy. Right. Um, he came in to pitch a new movie, you know? Right. Um, and in that very, very same meeting, they looked at him and they said, you know what? We really like you. How would you feel about directing episode eight? Yeah. And Ryan Johnson made a Ryan Johnson movie, you know, and they, and that's what they told them to do. They're like, here, have the keys to the most valuable franchise on the planet. And they could have eased it because, look, Ryan Johnson's a great filmmaker. I'm going to stand by that. I think Ryan Johnson's a great filmmaker, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, Knives Out was amazing. And um, and Looper is, is, a, is, a, is a better Star Wars movie than The Last Jedi, in my opinion. I think mm -hmm. Looper is the story of a young Sith Lord, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, have you ever seen Looper? Yeah, it's where it, like, loops... <laughs> With, no, no, with Bruce Willis and... So and... Looper, basically the whole story of Looper, just, just, just very quickly, is that, you know, um, there's these hitmen that kill people, and the way that you kill the people is that they send the bad guys back in time to kind of dispose of the bodies back in time. So yes, kill them. I saw it a long time ago, and I was like, oh, it's... It twists, a lot of twists. Yeah, yeah, and like eventually they close the loop, so eventually you have to kill yourself. Right. And, uh, you know... You know that that's when the loop closes, mm -hmm. but uh, Bruce Willis comes back in time to find a guy called the Rainmaker who had all these crazy powers and was just fucking up everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry for the bad word. Um, and um, and this Rainmaker has telekinetic powers, you know, mm -hmm. so he's got like the Force, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway, Looper's a great movie. It's a it's, it's a great sci-fi flick. Um, but Ryan Johnson. The Was point is, he, he went in there to, to write his own thing, and then they're like, oh, you know, why don't you just continue the trilogy? So really, it shows you that his mindset was just to go in there and write his own story. Yeah, he, he wanted to go in there and make a Ryan Johnson movie. Ryan Johnson is a guy who spent the first seven years of his life trying to get brick financed, you mm -hmm. know, um, that got it financed through friends and family. He didn't have a big movie studio behind him. He's, he's always done movies his own way. You know, with with, mm -hmm. a, with very little outside influence from studios, very similar to Lucas in a way, you know, of, yeah. of being highly self uh, sort of motivated and independent. And then they give him a Star Wars movie and they're like, well, do I need to work with this guy and that guy? It's like, no, no, no. Like, here's the script. You know, go do your own thing, mm -hmm. you know, and they trusted him because they liked him. But it should have been. The, the North Star. Well, I think whoever gave him the keys to that should, uh, should get not fired. have done that. <laughs> yeah. You know? Um, um, dude, I'm, I, I'm, I'm a thousand percent with you, man, because if you look at Star Wars, if you look at The Last Jedi on its own, you can say, oh, there's some cool things about this movie. You know, sure. like it looks, it looks beautiful. Sure. Um, 
it looks beautiful. I mean, like, like the cinematography is gorgeous. You know, but I, everyone always says like, oh, it looks beautiful. It's like, sure. I mean, you're, you're spending $250 million. Like you have right, the top right. producers and cinematographers and directors of photography in the world working on this thing. It's like, of course, anything's going to look beautiful if you have that budget. But Fair. it's not Star Wars. Like, I'm not going to see Star I, Wars for I'm the cinematography. You. I want to see freaking Star Wars. I want to see a story. I don't want to just see fighting or whatever. And there were just so many issues with that movie that I had. And it's like, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but it's, it's, he wasn't right for the job. I, you know, if he wants to make his own standalone Star Wars thing, fine, man. But to continue that trilogy was just the worst choice that they could have made. I'm the, first of all, I completely agree with you because I thought The Force Awakens was pretty cool up until, sadly, in my opinion, until Han Solo shows up. Mm -hmm. I thought The Last Jedi was pretty much its own thing that had nothing to do with star wars yeah um and it i was, thought yeah. rise, of, rise of skywalker was like two little brothers having a fight mm -hmm. over what star wars is between jj and ryan johnson yeah so to me the sequel trilogy is you know should should get wrapped up in a little box and like 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 in the like in superman 2 put in some weird space glass and get shot out into space you know like yeah and we should start over. Okay, the, they can do over. that. They they have the ability to do that. I don't know why they don't. Like it's it's what they say goes. So it's why not? You know, there's this picture that uh, yeah. I'm gonna show you guys. Cool. Um, check this out. So, wait. The Skywalker Saga. How it feels. So you got the prequels and the originals. It's like one congruent photo <laughs> and then the sequels oh, just dude, feel like completely oh, dude, like dude. like what's going on dude text me that bro text me that that should have been that that should have been the thumbnail <laughs> for yeah the video. yeah i can still change it uh no no, no. it's all the thumbnail we made was fine yeah but, it's uh, fine yeah, yeah. That's the, that's the that. cool part about Rule of Two is you, you don't really know what you come in for and, and you get this discussion that just opens up to everything yeah man you know and like look I, i'm I'm also excited to hear from because we're all going through this isolation thing together. You know yeah. what I mean? What do you guys all in the chat think are... think about everything to do with the sequels? I know people like hate the sequels and li like the sequels. I really liked episode seven. I, I liked episode nine. Um, I really didn't like episode eight. So I don't know. And, and I understand that that doesn't mean that there aren't problems with it. There are tons of problems. Believe me. I know Star Wars better than a lot of people here in the chat for sure. But there are a lot of people who can like something while still understanding there are issues with it. And I feel like episode nine had its issues, but it was good for what we got from episode eight. So that being said, I just hope going forwards, you know, we get some more stuff like the Mando because that thing was Mando Mando. Where's the fob Mando? Are we going to get uh, some Mando actors on the show? We can try. We can try. Look, man, we, we, we had so many plans. You will together. try. Yeah, yeah. Don't try it. <laughs> we, we, we had so many um, calls out to people um, to become guests on Rula 2, and, and we were really excited about using the studio like we did uh, for the Sam Witwer episode, which you should go check yeah. out. Um, and, like, look, the Sam Witwer episode was awesome, mm -hmm. but it took a little while to get started, you know? Yeah. And, and we don't like, have enough time. Yeah, and, like, when these, when these celebrities come on our show, they have an agenda – which is totally cool, and I actually support it. Which is they want to promote their their you know their work, you know. Yeah. So you have to you have to talk about their stuff that they're doing, and, and and like you know really hear them out and like see 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 what they're doing and promote it. Yeah. Um. And then we shifted over to talking Star Wars, and that's when he started going, man. That's, and that's when, when he was opening going. up completely, and he was getting into it. And I'm like, all right, cool. Now I'm like in this, but then you know, of course, then it was. We were out of time, and uh, yeah, you know, we, we 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 had some time pressures and some some outside voices, which I don't know if we cut out of the of the actual. Podcast, it wasn't in there, yeah, it wasn't. In it there. wasn't in there, but you know, uh, we had to deal with that, and, and and that's reality. But Sam Witt was a hell of a guy, and I can't wait to have him back on the show. And he I'm is; sure. he's a really cool guy. I got tons of things to talk to him about and ask him, and you know, maybe next time he'll come back and uh, we'll have that opportunity. Hopefully. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, what what were we talking about right before that? Oh yeah, guests. So yeah. so yeah, we have a lot of plans to bring guests on, but 
look, right now the world is a little bit on hold. Yeah. You no know, one wants to come out. <laughs> I mean, that's the reality. Yeah. You know? That's just the, you know, the reality. So it's like I still am down to talk Star Wars and try to take my mind off of this stuff. Because, look, I have a business with a bunch of employees, you know, and mm -hmm. I'm responsible for them during these tough times. And it's like I, I'm not – you know, like I don't have infinite amounts of of money. It's not yeah. like I can go, hey, yeah. and like, yeah. and like you know, a billion starships come out of the yeah, ice. Yeah, yeah. You know, that came from nowhere, fully staffed with a bathed. Everybody yeah. in the crew was bathed too. Yeah. You know, they all like and, and, and well groomed. Yeah. You know, for me, a week outside Los Angeles and look at <laughs> me, you know, falling uh, apart. So, yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, life is real, bro. And and right now, it's just like. Yeah, we yeah. all got to stick in there, but it's, it's just how it is. It's, it's all right. It's scary, but, you know, I think the world will be closer in the end, and uh, hopefully they watch more content. <laughs> yeah, yeah, please. Keep watching. Keep watching those. <laughs> Keep watching yeah. those. Oh, look at this one. I love, I love democracy. <laughs> um, some super oh, chats man. here we can read. What's your favorite yeah, yeah. thing to come out of the sequels? For me? Yeah, Josh Josh Rees at Rise asks. Um, for me, the favorite thing to come out of the sequels, without a doubt, is Kylo Ren. Yeah. I think I think cool. Kylo Ren is a really cool character. Um, he's I badass. think I, I he's a badass, and yeah. he had a great design of a costume. He's got a cool backstory. Leia and Han's kid, mm -hmm. you know. Um, student of luke skywalker gone bad um you know uh, a tortured soul so reminiscent to his grandfather um i think that kylo ren for me was definitely my favorite thing of the sequels yeah me too i agree yeah he just could have been used better in in the movies but he wasn't and that's that's hopefully we get you know a backstory with him or a movie or a show or something uh you guys are the best i hope you, we all stay well hey thanks zachary rosenberg Nightrunner exactly. says, Nightrunner is in the house. Lich King says, hey, Star Wars Theory, hope you're doing well, my lord. Mandalorian Season 2 would be awesome to see a Sith coming after Baby Yoda, then just pirates or Luke seeking out Baby Yoda or just making an entrance. I don't think any Sith will exist unless some are in hiding. What do you think? Look, I think that, um, that um, Moff Gideon um, might actually be a Sith. Like, I think he might have... He, like he's got control of the dark saber, so um, maybe not a Sith, but maybe like an Inquisitor kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Somehow, okay, maybe not a Sith. Maybe okay. like the way that I see know, like the yeah, Sith, I, I, yeah. Sith license might be too strong, but definitely somebody who is force sensitive and and understands the way of the dark side. You know, yeah. um, like I think that he knows the dark side. You know, I, I think, think he knows. knows I don't think he's force sensitive. I think he knows the ways of the dark side, and I think he's just a very. I think but there's a lot more I to his character. To me, when I was watching that finale episode, I said, "Oh boy, he's force sensitive." Before I saw the dark saber, and that's when he's flying the ship. He flies. You got Jedi reflexes, you know. Like mm. he's flying the ship, like a Jedi. Like, that's, you can yeah, that's tell true. that he, yeah. you know, that there's something different about him. And I was like, oh, my God, are they making him, a like, force sensitive? And then we, when he comes out of the ship, like, with that dark saber, I was like, oh, my Lord, they, they actually went there. But, you know? I mean, he's so, a, a high-ranking officer. I mean, he's a moth, so he may, might just be a good flyer. He could be a good flyer, absolutely. Um, so if he's got force something... powers, what do you think? How do you think that's going to play in? I mean, he obviously knows how to fight with the dark saber, right? And like um, Sabine also knew how to fight with the lightsaber. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry, with the dark saber, right? Yeah, yeah. And as far as we know, Sabine had zero um, uh, force power, uh, force sensitivity, right? Right. Is that true, or or is there any hint in in, in expanded lore that maybe she did? Well, if she did, she didn't show anything. <laughs> Right, right. And look, if she had the dark saber, you know, she was yeah. able to wield it. Um, you know, it's because, like, look, I'm old, so I still have that old thing stuck in my head that only Jedi can wield lightsabers. Yeah. Um, and Sith, you know? 
Uh, but then, you know, like it was only Han Solo was the only one that was able to use it that that wasn't a Jedi. Right. And all he did was just open up the gut of the Tauntaun. Yeah. Um, and then now Finn is also Force sensitive. So. Right. Finn is Force sensitive, and he was able to use it. I feel like the writers are just kind of like. You get force sensitivity. You get force sensitivity. You get some force sensitivity. Hey, at the back, you get some force sensitivity too. <laughs> you want some? Sure. Why not? Here you go. Yeah, yeah. So you know. So yeah. So look, I, I'm, I'm hoping that Gideon is force sensitive, does know the ways of the dark side. Maybe to your point, was an Inquisitor under Darth Vader. Um, who sort of went up the ranks and was promoted uh, into the military, um, or maybe was a secret practitioner. Well, of the you know force. what would be a big twist is um, Death Watch saved the Mandalorian when he was a foundling. So what if, I don't know, what if Moff was part of Death Watch somehow? Right, right, DWB. Yeah. Um, for all you Star Wars Galaxies heads out there, the Death Watch bunker. Uh, was like the coolest place to grind out gear in Star Wars Galaxies, you know, and um, it was my first um, like exposure to the concept of Death Watch was in the Death Watch bunker um, grinding out, you know, like your Mandos. Suit, Still got to you know? download that game. Maybe we can I can download it and then we can play all of us. A yeah. bunch of us. Yeah. Dude, like, um, like... I have a huge guild going on the gaming channel for the old Republic. And there was like oh, 20 people. Yeah. Running around with me. <laughs> <laughs> what it's recently pretty, yeah, dude, sure, it's like, pretty cool yeah oh because i have three uh level 70 uh old republic teams. oh really dude i play pretty often on oh, the gaming you? channel yeah yeah i mean i didn't bring my pc with me um because i actually came down for a shoot where i am i'm actually shooting some, or was shooting something then the yeah. world fell apart and now i'm kind of stuck here with this like you know pc um but let me ask people in the chat uh, we got some super chats you want to run through those sure okay uh, Zip says the last Jedi has more of a statement to make about Jedi Sith and dogma, while the other sequels don't have a lesson to teach. Disclaimer: I don't like any of them. Zip, you failed me for the last time, <laughs> my friend. I feel like the last Jedi shows you that, yeah, just give up and go hide away, and then oh, okay, then when it's too late, yeah, you can come back and and I mean, even in the Rise of Skywalker, Luke was like, yeah, I was wrong. Yeah. It's like, what, you were wrong for, like, what, like, 10, 20 years you go away? It's like, what the hell? You just wasted so much time. How, how many people in the chat would be willing to join uh, Theory and I uh, in Star Wars Galaxies to form a guild to, to take over the galaxy? I told you to come to this. Yeah. <laughs> the theory is taking over. Um, so... I, so look, I am in a place with like, uh, like I don't know how many back. Do we have any Back to the Future fans out there? We have any Back to the Future fans out there? Me. Yeah. If you're it, a Back it, to the Future fan, type one. Yeah, because I think that we can show it, right? Dude, show it, man. Yeah, why not, dude? It's cool. You worked hard. You know, let's see. Let Let's see. Uh, uh, we only got one guy, type one. No, no, there's a lag. It, it'll It'll come. It'll come. We only got one one or. <laughs> no, no. Oh my god! I did. I personally think like it's not in my top five movies of all time, but I personally think that Back to the Future is a perfect film. You know what? Inter interesting enough, I was looking at my analytics. I think it was two days ago, and over sixty percent are age eighteen to thirty-five. So they all should know Back to the Future. Yeah, look, we're getting a, a couple. We're getting, we're, a, slew we're getting of a ton them. of ones. All right, yeah. so I'm gonna do it. Should I do it? Yeah, do it, man. While you do it, I'm gonna read super chats. Yo, Squiggly Man says Dolphins just got my CB. Brian Jones plus. Oh Lockheed. yeah, Brian Jones, baby, highest paid cornerback in the NFL. Parth says maybe Moff Gideon wants to be a Sith and Force sensitive baby Yoda. DNA midichlorians is a way to. Oh uh, yeah, yeah maybe. Hurricane says Moff Gideon could be an acolyte of the Beyond. Timeline is right for it. Could be looking palped. Ooh yeah maybe. Right. Yo, Squiggly Man says, Dolphins got uh, my cowboy, Byron James. Big jealous. Oh, oh, Mark's, Mark, you there? Oh, he's gone. He's gone. Oh, well. Maybe I can get him on FaceTime for you guys. Yo, Mark, you there? No, no, no. It's, it's crapping yeah, out. Sorry, sorry. I lost. Uh, do you have me back? 
Yeah, sort of. It's really choppy. Yeah, so is your, yeah, it's, um, my uh, Wi-Fi doesn't go that far. Do you want to get your phone? I can get you on FaceTime and show you, show them. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah, cool. All right. All right. Collider's taking over. I don't know why it's not focusing. Look at that. Isn't that cool? That's sick, man. Oh, it's not showing anything. Oh, there we go. That's so sick, dude. It's beautiful, man. I gotta take more care of it. Yeah. For people who don't know, it's a DeLorean. When was the last time you started that thing? Like a year and a half ago, dude. Dude, what the hell are you doing, man? Driving yeah. around. Does the license plate say out of time? <laughs> Yo, I'm back. Can you hear me? What up? Yeah. That's heavy, Doc. Whoa, um, Doc's heavy. It's funny. As we were talking, um, uh, Jamie Costa uh, FaceTime me. Uh, maybe look. It's like right now. We're gonna. We're, yeah, we're gonna be. We're gonna be him. at home. We're gonna be at home for a long time. Yeah. You know, we're gonna be at home for a long time. Um, so it's like, what kind of cool stuff can we do, man? Like, it'd be great to play Galaxies. I'm down to play uh, Old Republic. We I could try to get too. guests, you know, through through Skype. That'd be cool. Yeah, we can get Just guests like this. Skype. We can get we can get Jamie. We can get Josh. Like the celebrities, I think are going to be tougher mm -hmm. during this. Uh, we can get Perry. Somebody said Alan Peters requested Perry. Perry would love to come on here. I know that she's going stir crazy. Um, and like, look, we don't have to, you know, succumb to this crap. You know. Yeah, I mean, just be careful out there. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not worrying about it too much. How can I rewatch Josh Thompson Rule of Two podcast? Oh, I took it down, man, because it was just a mess. We got to get him back on the show. It was. Yeah, we had some some technical difficulties, but uh, we've got them all figured out now, which is good. So. Yeah, yeah. So look, hopefully soon I'll get the studio opened opened up again, and um, we can start shooting in there again. But I, but I have to do what's right for my you know for my employees um and keep them safe you know that's the number one priority is just safety you know we gotta must do what you safe. think is right of course yeah yeah don't try it <laughs> you know, like, you know like, when people say hey mark i want to come to the office i i always tell them don't try it tell them to wear you know, a hazmat that's suit from, that's from revenge of the sin i know it's okay i know you know i mean well, man, it's six oh one. I've been almost on here for an hour now. I guess it's should we. Is there anything else we should talk about, or should we call it a day? Yeah, I mean, um, look, um, you're the boss, bro. So if you want to call it a day, I'm no, good. Man, Are there any questions left? Uh, anybody, anybody have any there? questions left? <laughs> Crickets. All right, I guess that, I guess that, uh, that, you know, that says it. That says is the stream going to stay on? Yeah, man, the stream is stay on. We're not deleting this one. Um, yeah, that says it. All right, I'm going to go eat some food, and then I'll stream on the gaming channel probably later, and I'll get uh, Galaxies. Yeah, get Galaxies, man. Get yeah. Galaxies. Let's play a little Star Wars because, look, we have, you know, we don't, uh, we have a lot of time on our heads. We have a lot of I time know, they should be watching the videos. God damn yeah, it. Man, watch the videos, man. Watch watch Star Wars Theories betray videos. There's a lot of me. hard work into They those. betray me. <laughs> Just go on strike. <laughs> yeah. Corona um, is, well, well, at least it's Corona is taking over instead of, oh, I told you, Kaleidos. Kaleidos is taking over. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. But, but look, man, um, look, I, I, I'm really happy to do this podcast with you. Um, Dude, I, I love this. It's great. Yeah, man. We have fun, dude. We have fun. And then hopefully when, you know, this thing is going to be done in the summer and then, you know, we can resume with shooting. Either way, we're going to shoot episode two in the summer or if we don't do the summer, then uh, the fall, uh, hopefully, you know. You know what? Uh, be before and, we go here, I'm going to put um, 
um, Star Wars. Just Google this: Star Wars Galaxies Legends, mm -hmm. and it's all, it's all there. It's all there. All the info to to uh, download Star Wars Galaxies is there. And the cool thing about Star Wars Galaxies is that you get a free max level tune, um, so you don't have to grind out a whole tune. You get one free. That's cool. uh, with every account, so you're ready to start Endgame right, right, uh, right from the beginning. Is it free? It's free. Yeah, yeah. It's completely okay. free. Okay, cool. Um, Star Wars Galaxies um, uh, Legends is the one that I've been playing. It's the one that has the biggest population. And when you when you talked to George Lucas about it, you t asked him about it. What did he say? Tell that story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, um, uh, Mark. So so I used to work uh, with Mark Echo. And uh, we licensed uh, Lucas. Uh, we, we licensed Star Wars for hoodies. I don't know if anybody in the chat remembers the, the the Mark Echo Star Wars hoodies, but they're actually really cool and classic. And um, you know, with every big license, George wants to meet the person doing it. So he invited uh, Mark uh, Echo over to his ranch, and uh, Mark obviously took me because he knew. I mean, Mark and I are not only close, but he knew what a fan I was. And, um, you know, the first question I asked is about Star Wars Galaxies. This is around 2000, late 2005, early 2006. And he said, I'll never forget the quote, that Star Wars Galaxies collapsed under the weight of its own ambition. Um, the game to this day, I believe, is the most ambitious video game ever uh, attempted um, in terms of the scope of the game design. And um, and Lucas uh, spent a lot of money on it and lost a lot of money on it. It never got great numbers of, of player base because uh, World of Warcraft was so popular and, and they came out around the same time. Um, and yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, um, he, he loved the game. You know, it was a game that he wanted, a game where people could live out the way he told me, live out their own Star Wars stories that everybody can have their own Star Wars story. If you wanted to be a, a astromech droid builder, that's your entire game is just building astromech droids. If you wanted to be a creature handler, you could breed and train animals. You can literally yeah. breed animals out of different DNA and just do that all day. Of course, there was the bounty hunting system and the Jedi system. And obviously an entire space game where you can have the Jedi Starfighter and uh, ships where you can play around with other players in the same ship. That's pretty you know, cool. It's, it's, it's crazy. It's cra absolutely crazy. And Star Wars Legends, um, uh, Galaxy's Legends, has most of it, has most of those things, even though it's a version of the NGE. Anyway, go ahead and download it, and maybe next time... Uh, yeah, we can all get like a big we, guild and just play yeah, man yeah 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 we can get the rule yeah. of two guild out there and just do what we got to do and take over the galaxy take over everything all right guys uh thanks for joining us in today's stream we'll be back next monday at uh, 5 p.m pst and um yeah thanks for joining mark of course thanks for chilling man yeah oh, man thank you bro and stay safe my brother yeah stay safe everyone all right until then remember Rise, my friends.